Hello there and welcome back to Spilling the Paint Water. My name is Chloe Rose, but I go by Chloe Rose Art on YouTube. So if you enjoy this podcast, please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Art of Chloe Rose for more artsy content. Today I am joined with the legendary Tom Bancroft, who is a hugely successful animator, animating classic movies like Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King, Mulan, Brother Bear, Pocahontas, and so many more. He is also the creator of Mushu from Mulan. On top of his impressive Disney background, he's also worked with DreamWorks, DC Comics, Marvel, Hasbro, and many more. He's published books and is also the creator of hugely successful art challenge Mermaid, a yearly challenge every May to draw mermaids. You can find him on Instagram and Twitter as Tom Bancroft One, as well as his amazing podcast, the Bancroft Brothers Animation Podcast, which he hosts with his twin brother. So I'm really excited to get started and I hope you enjoy. Okay, so uh, hello, I'm with Tom today. I'm so excited to be talking to you. Tom, how are you doing? I am doing great, Chloe. How are you? I am doing really well. It's so awesome to be able to talk with you. It's honestly such a privilege, actually. I'm really glad that you took the time out. (laughs) The awesomeness is all on my side. It's awesome (laughs) to meet you and talk to you. I I already watched your first, uh, was it your first show with Jasmine? Yes, Mm -hmm. it was. Really enjoyed that. He's a great guy. Oh, he is wonderful. He's very, very great guy. Yes. (laughs) I I didn't know who he was because I don't Mm -hmm. watch a lot of YouTube kind of art instruction stuff, but... Somebody had sent me a link and said, oh, here's this guy. He's, he's teaching people how to draw Mushu because he had done an episode. This was probably oh, yeah? years ago. This mm-hmm. might have been a few years back. And anyway, he did a whole how to draw Mushu thing. And that was kind of cool. It was neat to watch it. Jazza, oh. you got a couple things wrong. I'm sorry. I'm trying <laughs> to say it. But, uh, but uh, a lot of people, I'm sure, learned a lot from that. So that's cool. Absolutely. <laughs> anyway, and, and you're pretty cool, too. I love your oh. new background. I'm seeing that. Thank it's pretty you. cool. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and you do all kinds of different things, don't you? I'm going to interview you because I do a podcast. Oh, okay. so I'm, it's so hard for me not to ask you questions. <laughs> no, absolutely fine. It's always, you know, it's great to have back and forth. Yeah, I do YouTube uh, full time. Um, not something I planned to go into, but I just kind of fell into it because I just loved art as a hobby. And then just really, went you're from not there. thinking this is the thing. This is the career. No, I, <laughs> I went into computer science. That's what my degree is in. But yeah. um, I really didn't enjoy it at all. And I, I missed having something creative in my life. So I did it as a hobby on the side. And then it just kind of blew yeah. up from there. So, yeah, this is it's my job now. And I really enjoy it. It's just I don't have a hobby now. <laughs> so I, mean, I need to find one. Is art the hobby or is this the hobby? It sounds like you have three or four different interests, really. Yeah. Well, basically, um, art was always the hobby that I did. And then I started YouTube and It was really just something that I enjoyed doing. I enjoyed editing videos. I didn't do a very good job with what I was initially making. So I thought, what am I kind of good at? I suppose I can do art. So I incorporated art and like the entertainment about being an artist into, you know, YouTube. And then it just, it really just went crazy from there. And yeah, here I am. <laughs> what 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 made it go crazy? What was that one thing that did it? Um, I made a video about art hacks. I did like 12 artist hacks you might not know. And I just made a video on that. And I got 100,000 views on it in five days. And I had like 2,000 wow. subscribers. It was just, it somehow hit the algorithm. I don't know why. Nothing had ever done that before for me. And it just, it went from there. And I kept making videos and it just kept growing. Wow. I, now, yeah. I'm going to sound like an old man, and I am. <laughs> But uh, an art hack, I assume, is sort of like a tip and trick, right? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Just a quick way to do something it's or like... cleverly disguised as... as It's art instruction. Disguised yes. as a tip and trick. Okay. Exactly. Yes. I like that. That's cool. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> I'll have to watch that video and learn a few things, I'm Aww. sure. No, I don't, I don't think so. It's kind of rubbish now I look at it, but... <laughs> <laughs> rubbish yeah <laughs> all right so how did you find me I, how did oh, i get on this, this amazing show you know i actually found you because of youtube skillshare reached out to me and wanted to work with me a few years ago and i found your class through that and then oh. i yeah and the disney That's princess cool. class i believe it was called something like uh-huh. that oh i didn't and... use the word disney <laughs> oh yeah the, the creative yeah. the creative princess Cre- create your creative. own princess That's probably. the one something yes like you're that. very clever yeah. about that <laughs> yeah um But yeah, I found you through that. I made a video where I was drawing like from your class and Mm -hmm. yeah, I just thought you were really cool. And I sort of looked into your background a lot because I didn't know a lot of artists at the time because again, it was just a hobby. I just followed certain people. And then when I was really getting into it, I learned more about people. And then I found out how 
awesome you were and how you know creatively talented and skilled you are and your amazing you know background so I knew that you were one of the top five people I really wanted to interview on my podcast so yeah yeah is this going to be podcast what number three or four or five or eight it's probably going to be three or four yes okay Mm -hmm. awesome I I made the top three I'm I'm honored I'm very excited about it. <laughs> yeah, I've, I'm, I'm old enough that I've done a lot of different things. I'm mm-hmm. very proud of that. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I'm... You should be. Some people look at my career probably and go, gosh, Tom, pick pick something. You know, <laughs> but I, I mean, I'm a little bit like you in that I think I have a lot of loves too. I, mm-hmm. I, I haven't met really an artist that doesn't feel that way, that like, oh, I want to do comics. I want to do yeah. comic strips. I want to do... I want to write a movie. No, I want to direct a movie. I want to, you know, animate, yeah. you know. And so we, we kind of tend to jump around, and, and I definitely uh, am bad at that. Yeah, sure. you just don't put all your eggs in one basket. I think that's a big thing mm-hmm. that a lot of artists shouldn't do. And I your, I was looking at your IMDb page earlier on, and I was like, wow, that's so impressive. You've done so much. <laughs> so it's really cool. Um, you basically got into Disney in, I believe it was the late eight, uh, 1980s. Is that right? Yes. So uh, I started in 19, um, hold on, I know this, 1989-ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And Professionally. It, you know, things were so incredibly different, you know, to what they're like now. You know, you're a Disney animator for 11 years. Um, mm-hmm. You're a Disney animator on movies. And I, I got the list because I checked on this. Beauty and the Beast, Lion King, Aladdin, Pocahontas, Mulan, Brother Bear, and so much more than that. Um, so essentially you worked on basically all of the movies that I grew up on. Um, so yeah. worked on the classics that all of us, my generation, just love, oh, you know? I, I was your babysitter for many years, I'm sure. Exactly. I was born <laughs> in the... Unofficially. <laughs> exactly. I was born in the early 90s. So yeah. essentially you would... You, people like you were a huge part of my childhood um mm. to start off i just really like to hear about how you got into animation and um you know how you got to work for disney that kind of thing i'm sure this is a question you answer all the time but just to start off for this audience you know yeah to your background yeah i'll you know that's the nice thing about this podcast you know I, or you know I, or youtube channel uh video uh, i do kind of like the idea of you know new people sort of discovering me too in a way mm-hmm. um so yeah i'll um for those that don't know, I have a twin brother. I have an identical twin brother. And we both were growing up as little kids w- loving to draw. And so we would compete and we'd show our moms our, our, our drawings and say, which one's better? Trying to get her <laughs> to like one of us better. And she'd always <laughs> say, you know, that she liked them both the same. Uh-huh. And uh, but that that competition really led to us kind of refining each other constantly Um it, not always in positive ways, but, it, you know, we are guys, too. We were just like, yeah, it's okay, fine. But fix <laughs> that right there. You know, we were constantly telling us the, the negatives, really, mm-hmm. not not necessarily what really worked. And so, but we did kind of push each other. And mm-hmm. so that led to us kind of falling into animation just out of high school. We'd already been doing comic strips for the school newspaper. Mm-hmm. We loved comic strips growing up. And it was kind of like the second heyday of comic strips at the time with Garfield and and Peanuts, the Charlie Brown and Snoopy, they were still out and big. Uh, But then right around the corner was Calvin and Hobbes and The Far Side and things like that were starting to come out when we were just a little bit older. Um, And so there really was kind of still a viable, you know, great, you know, what what looked like a great uh, um, uh, uh, career. But as we were just coming out of high school and stuff, it was starting to be clear that that wasn't necessarily going to be a great career. I'm really... Fortunately, uh, we got out of it because the newspapers started going away and things like that. And really, we, we live in a world now where, where comic strips, unfortunately, there's web comics, of course, but the printed comic strips are, are not near what they used to be. Yeah. Um, and so what we did was we, we, uh, we discovered animation. And so we were already doing cartooning. We were already in love with drawing characters. Uh, but then a friend of ours said, hey, I did this clay animated film, and this was just out of high school. And he showed it to us, and we were just amazed. At, like, uh, this is back in the day. I, I hate to say it, but, you know, it's before the Internet. It's, it's really before computers. And and so, uh, again, this was like, you know, early 80s or so. Mm-hmm. And so, he, you know, he's showing us this thing he did, and he did it with a little a video camera. Not video, even. It was a film camera, a Super 8 camera. And he, you know, done it one frame at a time. It was just some clay animation of a little film that he made. But we were just amazed going, oh, my gosh, this means that we and we were huge Star Wars fans. And like that whole, you know, we thought we were going to be get into the effects industry uh, mm-hmm. because that was brand new at the time um, that it was really taking off and people were getting into visual effects and stuff. 
and we thought, oh, well, they need stop motion animators and stuff. So we, we started to go down that road and made a little stop motion animated film and all that. And it just got us hooked to see all of a sudden this thing we did come to life. Mm -hmm. And then somehow it kind of hit us that, wait a second, we already like to draw. Why are we doing this whole clay thing and have to fight gravity all the time and stuff? And they're just falling <laughs> to pieces as we do this film. We could draw this. And, and so it, it hit us and we found out about CalArts, which is California Institute of the Arts. Mm -hmm. And it was just down the road. We lived in California, so it wasn't that far. Nice. Um, and we applied, and the craziest part is that they let us in. So, and and both of us. I mean, we had portfolios. We definitely, you know, had been working, but um, we were really young. Got in at CalArts probably about nineteen twenty. I think mm -hmm. we were about twenty years old. Uh, we only stayed for about a year and a half. Uh, we literally left uh, right as we turned twenty one. I think it was, um, and then uh, got got our job at Disney when we were twenty one. And from there, our careers kind of split. I'm going to still, I, wanna, I don't want to keep saying we, um, but um, I stayed in the Florida animation studio that mm -hmm. they just opened up at Disney MGM Studios, which later became, um, what did it come? Um, Hollywood Studios. Hollywood Studios, thank it's you. It's always MGM to me. <laughs> yeah, same, I know. Um, yeah. And now it's going to become Star Wars Land, or I don't, I don't mm. know what they're calling it now. Yeah. But, um, Anyway, I was on tour for many, many years, but actually producing pieces of the, the Disney films that were being done in California, the main studio. Mm -hmm. We were a much smaller studio in, uh, in Florida, but we got a lot more job, like kind of responsibility because of that, which was yeah. nice. Um, wow. And so I moved up there and, and by uh, an animated, um, I did Pocahontas and Pocahontas. I did Young Simba and Lion King. That's so and cool. kind of moved up to becoming a supervising animator. So on Mulan, mm -hmm. I, I designed and created, hold on, this guy, Mushu. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's so, so cool. Yeah, so that's kind of a slice of it. That's actually even just the first half of my career. And then I went off and created my own company here. I now live in Nashville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm and had my own company here for many years and then um and now i'm uh i have my own side company but also teach uh created the animation program at lipscomb university in nashville wow yeah. that's very impressive like it's wow. been busy i know i go through it all and i didn't even talk about all the as part of my company after i left mm -hmm. disney I, I illustrated like 50 different children's books There's wow a ton of them out there i worked at veggie tales on on um a big idea productions on veggie tales and directed a few episodes of that so it's been a lot it's been a lot of different things um that is impressive but My I'm, word. I'm ha and then i've done comic books and i, I really have kind of tried to hit all those little bucket list things that i've uh -huh. always wanted to do and so as as things kind of popped up i i usually said yes I still do. <laughs> that is so. awesome. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm very much like that in a, 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 dif a different way. Um, whenever I get some cool opportunity, even from like, mm, I don't know if I got time for that. I'm like, yes, I've got to just grab every opportunity by the horns and just do it. So <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think that really, it really does make a difference. You know, it really does. And many of them don't work out. We'll admit that, right? But you will never and know. But you never know. There's never always know. that one that you were just like, yeah, I said yes to that. It was either for a friend or whatever. It was mm -hmm. that not the high priority yes. It was this low priority yes. Mm -hmm. And I did it and I did my little part. But then it goes out there and becomes this thing that, um, you know, well, I guess like Lion King in a way. Yeah. We never thought it was going to be what it is now, that it's still around. They're copying so it, remaking it, <laughs> and all that. I really hope you're enjoying the episode so far because it's kindly brought to you by Bloom Candles. Now, Bloom is a small business that makes gorgeous, handcrafted, hand-poured soy candles, wax melts, and reed diffusers. Now, because I am home 99% of the time, over the last seven months at least, I've been getting into redecorating and organizing and just making the space that I live in all the time look nice and smell nice which is why I really love candles and bloom is a new discovery that I am really enjoying now I just received a package from them the other day with a candle called high tide and it's one of the most refreshing candle scents that I've ever experienced they have limited edition candles like pumpkin spice latte and holiday scents too which I'm really excited for they are far healthier than traditional candles because they use industry clean fragrance oils so no carcinogens or toxins that you will find in other brands they are also incredibly eco-friendly and will be planting a tree for every candle that they sell starting on the first of 
of January. The candles are also insanely cute and very aesthetically pleasing. So if you would like to check out their array of scents, you can get free shipping over $75 with the coupon code PAINTWATER1 and you can get a free wax melter with the coupon code PAINTWATER2 and both coupons can be combined. So check out Bloom Candles at bloom-candles.com slash spilling the paint water. I don't know. I just, I can't even like begin to imagine working on those kind of movies. Like, did you at the time, um, you know, Disney in 2020 is so vastly different to what I'm imagining it was in the late eighties and early nineties. You know, there's this huge yeah. Disney culture. There's literally people on Instagram and YouTube that make a living by going to the parks or just talking about Disney, you know, something that didn't exist, you know, when yeah. you worked at Disney. Um, it's just so trendy now. You know, my first trip was when I was two, two years old in the early 90s. And I don't know, was this, you know, that huge cultural craze that there is with Disney now, um, when you began working for Disney, was there any form of like Disney craze then? Or was it really just starting to lift off then? Because obviously there wasn't the internet. Yeah. So, you know. it's a, You're right. I think the internet is the one thing that really launched that. I mean, mm -hmm. all the crazes in the world, yeah. right? Now it's a niche world we live in because of the internet. Yeah. Um, we can kind of celebrate all everything all at once. <laughs> yeah. Tiny groups will show up to, to be a part of that celebration. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would say that it, it was there. You know, there were mm -hmm. definitely people... But I must admit, it was more local. Like, I, I came from California, but then, of mm -hmm. course, lived in Florida for many years. So I, I knew Disneyland pretty well, but I also knew Disney World very well because mm -hmm. I worked there. And so I got to see those slices of people. Like, so there were Californians, locals, that w had season passes and had it for years. And yeah. they would take their kids every day, practically, and all that. And, like, those were the original Disney-obsessed people. And then th that happened in Florida, of course, after like in the whatever late 70s when they built Disney World, you started having that in Florida too, the same kind of thing, maybe even bigger. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, international people would fly in and do weeks like every year. We used to see people that would come. I literally was on tour at, when I was at Disney MGM in the animation uh, tour. We had like one wall that was all glass and people could walk through and watch us working. Wow. And so, I would, you know, we would look up and, you know, we try not to look at them most of the time, but sometimes we'd look up or, or there'd just be, it'd be pretty obvious that in between the tours, you know, it would empty out and then it would be empty for, I don't know, whatever, we'll say 15 minutes until mm -hmm. the next tour came in. And, but there would always be like every once in a while, usually during the summer, one or two kids that would just stay there and mm -hmm. like, cause they didn't kick them out. You didn't have to leave. So they would stay there and they would just plant themselves in a certain spot mm -hmm. to watch us draw. And I love that. I know a lot of us, because we were those kids, right? Yeah. And we were younger. And um, there would be people that would come. I remember there was a brother and a sister that would come every year, same week, or I think it was almost a month. Wow. And they would literally spend their whole vacation with their parents at Disney MGM, just sitting there all day long watching us draw. Wow. And so we got to know them. We would go up there and we'd say, hey, you want to take a behind the scenes tour? And we'd bring them down with us wow. and give them tours and things like that. So yeah, that that was an international Disney fan for sure. And I would like to think, I know some of those people have contacted me through the years and said, I got into animation because I was one of those people that just sat yeah. there and watched you guys draw. I was gonna ask I you that, you know, that. do you think that there's a lot of people that you inspired? Yeah, I do, ha I've had, I've been blessed that I've heard some of those stories. Yeah, that where they would get wow. back to me and email me or, or actually be working professionals that reached mm -hmm. out and said, I used to do that and I would, they might remember me. Unfortunately, I usually don't remember them. Yeah. And they were like kind of kids at the time anyway. Um, and I wasn't the only one. There were a few of us that would kind of um, try and look out for those people that kind of kept coming back. And uh, every once in a while, we'd bring them down and give them like a VIP tour or something mm. like that. So it, it was a lot of fun that way. And uh, But yes, uh, the that was the, sort of the beginning of, I guess, the uh, that whole fever for Disney now it's become extremely nostalgic. I mean, look at your wall. It's all, <laughs> yep. it's, all uh, um, it's the artwork. It's the, y there's so many even sub things that you could follow with Disney. Some people love the parks and they just want to be in, in that world and, and yeah. talk about that. Others love the films, the animated films. Some kind of overlap in all of the things. Um, but yeah, there's so much to it that, you know, you could kind of, 
I, I get why there's so many podcasts and, and you know, YouTubers out there doing just yeah. talking Disney. It's just such a huge culture now. Did you at the time when you were working on those movies ever feel that, you know, you were working on what would potentially be a classic movie to future generations? Was that something you ever really, you know, thought about? It's funny to say that I didn't. I, I guess in a way we didn't. Um, mm -hmm. I, um, yes and no. Okay, so like when I was growing up, it was like Fox and the Hound. And, and uh, I remember Oliver and Company had come out just as I was in CalArts. Um, and, uh, you know, they yeah, they were worldwide and they would go around and, and they'd be talked about for quite a while. And people would get, I think the VHSs were just starting to come out uh, mm -hmm. around Oliver and Company. Um, then Who Framed Roger Rabbit came out uh, again while I was at CalArts, and so those got huge, of course. And you, you know, they were in magazines. It was, you know, it was all over. Um, but bef I don't remember thinking, okay, but ten years from now we'll still be talking about Ra Roger Rabbit or, or Oliver and Company, because like many times, like we weren't talking about Fox of the Hound ten years later, and some of those weren't necessarily holding up. But but everybody knew Lady and the Tramp. Everybody knew, you know what I mean? Like those were still classic so I guess in a way I, I knew that anything I worked on would be kind of a, a part of that I just it wasn't to the level of Lion King I mean once Lion King came out and really a little a, a piece of that was Beauty and the Beast too that was our first yeah. exposure of oh my gosh even adults are talking about Beauty and the Beast you know yeah uh, movie stars were talking about Beauty and the Beast at the Academy Awards they were saying how much they enjoyed it wow. and things like that and so that we we kind of hit another stratosphere, I think, about that time. Yeah. Wow. That is really cool. Yeah. It was it was really cool to be a part of that. I remember yeah. the very first time to so Beauty and the Beast was my first time animating at Disney. I worked on Rescuers Down Under just before mm -hmm. that. There's another one that nobody really talks about, but uh, but Beauty and the Beast, I I was a beginning animator on that. I didn't do anything good. It was all just. <laughs> Let's go kill the beast. It was all these crowds, mm -hmm. uh, people with pitchforks and torches. Mm -hmm. And I did a couple, like I did a Cogsworth scene that's kind of memorable and stuff. But but most of the time it was beginning animator stuff. They don't yeah. give you the good stuff when you're first starting out. But I do remember like us all gathering. And this was as music videos were, were they were definitely a big deal. But Celine Dion, who nobody knew who, it, who she was at the mm -hmm. time, had done the sort of the you know, the remake version of, you know, Tales Old as Time, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and then also uh, it was James Ingram, I think, was the, the guy in it. I, I liked him. I knew who he was. <laughs> but anyway, we all gathered around. It was like literally the first time we'd seen any real color from the film. Disney had rushed out to, to put together some color scenes and finish a few scenes off so that they could cut it for that music video. Mm -hmm. And literally, it was one of the first times we were all coming together, and it was like a little mini premiere. We were watching this music video premiere on, I think, MTV probably, and we're for, we're seeing some of our scenes in color for the first time in that music video, because they, you know, at that point we were already off of it, and they were just rushing to to color it out, out in California. So we weren't mm -hmm. really, when we go to the premieres at the end, there's a lot of it we still haven't seen in color, you know, and so a yeah. lot of people don't know that they think, oh well, we, we will have seen it, but back in those days. We were working up all the way to the end, yeah. to the release date practically, and then it would go off to the other departments, and we wouldn't see how it would get all finished until it was all cut together. Wow. So we had no idea that Beauty and the Beast had come together as well as it had, because we don't see it with the score either. And so here it is, premiere mm -hmm. day, we're watching the, the whole movie finally in color and with the music, and, and it just all of a sudden everything that seemed like it wasn't going to come together or it wasn't going to work like beauty and the beast halfway through looked like a train wreck <laughs> but then all of a sudden we go to this premiere months and months later and we're like you know we're like oh it's coming together i think it's going to be good but you yeah. never know and then until we saw it at the premiere we we're like oh and and that music video that was the first time we were like oh this is extra special this oh, is wow. looking really good and then going to the premiere we're like oh, wow, this is going to be around for a while. And I think it might be one of the best movies we've made in, in quite a while at Disney. So wow. that was the beginning of it. And then, of course, Lion King was, was even the next hurdle, even a bigger jump. But uh, I, I remember fondly the Beauty and the Beast days because I was very young. I was probably 21 or 20, probably 22, 23 mm -hmm. uh, when that came out. Wow. 
That is so incredibly cool. I really don't know all that much about animation. So, you know, you saying about how it kind of looked a bit like a train wreck. You you never really know what to expect unless you, I guess you're in animation in any any way. But I had I mean, no it's idea. Kind of like like you, right? That beginning phase of doing a painting or something, right? And mm-hmm. you're first putting in the color. It can go so many different oh, ways. Oh, it goes right? to that ugly stage. <laughs> oh, it, and it does. You're right. All paintings actually mm-hmm. go through that, no matter how good you are. Where there's an ugly stage where you're just like, no, I got to get through this. I got to put keep putting paint on this, and it, it'll it'll come back to life again. But I've just killed it for a little while, and now hopefully it's going to come around and look good if I keep going. So a lot of people watching this podcast or listening to this podcast are essentially probably going to be wondering, well, how did you get into Disney animation? And I know this is probably a question that you get multiple times a day and um, we're not really going to cover that in this because obviously you get asked it a lot and if anyone is listening and interested it's on Tom's FAQ page on his website he talks about it in great detail there Um, but I am curious if you for example wanted to get into Disney animation um, yourself say now and you had no animation experience behind you you know in any means what do you think that you would maybe do now to uh, you know attempt to get the attention of disney because obviously it's such a difficult field and line of work to get into because it's so huge now okay so in this scenario i'm young Mm -hmm. i'm trying to get into disney Mm -hmm. but i've never animated before is Mm -hmm. that part of it okay um yeah, it's not necessary that you've animated before. Now, that's not going to make you an animator, unfortunately, mm-hmm. right? Uh, if I wanted to be an animator, I better have animation already done. They're not going to train you. That's something that a lot of people don't really know. Yeah. Is that, and that happened a little bit, I must admit, at the beginning. I, it was starting to get phased out about the time I got into Disney. Mm-hmm. Um, we started doing a lot less training. Um and they really do expect you to come in and be professional now. And that's why there's so many animation schools around. And they've helped bring up the animation schools, many of the, the top five ones around the country, because that, that became their training program. They're like, okay, you guys teach it right, and, and we won't have to have a big training program. We can hopefully bring mm-hmm. in people that kind of know what they're doing, uh, at least the, the, a little bit above, uh, you know, at least intermediate level. And so, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I can't go to Disney now and, and expect to be an animator having never animated. Um, hopefully that's obvious, but for a lot of people that's not. And so it, hopefully what I would do, do though is that I would have an amazing portfolio of something like that would point toward I should be a storyboard artist because I have a lot of storyboards in here or I'm a character designer. I have a ton of characters that I've designed. And by the way, that means... I didn't. That doesn't mean I I drew Mickey and I'm showing you how my best Belle or 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 you know Winnie the Pooh or whatever. I'm I'm drawing my own original characters and showing that I can do this. Um, and it may or may not even be in a real strict Disney style. Like most of the time, they don't even necessarily want you to draw in what would be considered a traditional Disney style. Um, you need to be versatile usually and show mm. that you can draw in, in a few different styles. Not Maybe not a huge wide variety, but I'm not like saying Simpsons, but I'm saying you just need to know anatomy really well. You need to know how to draw. You need to know basics of perspective and things like that. Um, and it, it really does take a while. Like this isn't going to be somebody that's just a fan of animation. And I preach this all the time because, uh, you know, I'm an instructor at, at here in Nashville at, at Lipscomb. And so... I'm constantly, you know, saying, look, there's a big difference between being a fan of animation mm-hmm. and working on an animated film because it's a lot of work and yeah. um, there's a lot you have to know. I, I actually believe this. I've said this before, but I really think that if Michelangelo lived t- today and probably certainly Da Vinci, but if those masters lived today, they would have been 2D animators, especially mm-hmm. if they lived in the 90s. I don't think... Yeah. It, and then... then then 2D animation would never go away any, either because those guys would be doing the most amazing things. And I, I make Glenn Keane in my life. Glenn Keane, who's one of the top animators of all time, um, he is that kind of he is that Michelangelo. But but those people, Da Vinci and Michelangelo, not only did they know all the things they needed to know, but they were curious. They wanted to learn more. Da Vinci was an inventor. And so he would have loved the idea of animation and being able to bring his drawings to life. And and yet he also knew all the anatomy and all the movement things. He was studying movement. Man, he would have been a great animator. And I know that's what they would have done. And I, I still look at Disney animators 
and, and visual development artists, they really are sort of the, the masters of our time. Um, and I'm not necessarily even including myself in that crowd. I, I'm mm-hmm. talking about the top of the top people. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but I do feel that way, that, uh, that our, the Renaissance artists of the world, I think, have traditionally been animators. That honestly would make sense. I agree with that entirely. And again, I don't know any of the animation related field, but that definitely seems like something that would make sense for them. <laughs> yeah. It's just you have to know so much. You yeah. have to not only understand drawing and anatomy, and, but now I have to understand movement. I have to, I have to know acting. I have to know uh, timing. I have to know, uh, yeah, I mean, all these principles of weight and balance. I mean, it, it's it's there's a lot to it. And I think it takes about 10 years to make a great, animator yeah definitely um so is there one movie from disney that you didn't work on that you would have loved to have been able to work on i'm curious oh there's many so um i left disney uh back uh just after brother bear so i worked Mm -hmm. on that was my last film with them and now that's been gosh 15 20 years i think around 15 years Mm -hmm. um so like I didn't get a obviously work, and then they went into computer animation right after that. So Brother Bear was one of the last two D's uh, films, and so uh, I would love to have animated a two D version of Zootopia. I would have loved to have done an animated version, a two D animated version of mm-hmm. Tangled, because oh, I those characters Tangled. I would just love to draw. And so that's the that's the hard answer uh, for me is that yeah. you're you're saying which one would I would like to have drawn on. Uh, I want to draw on those. I don't want to do computer animation yeah. on Zootopia. I want to. I want to have drawn it, mm-hmm. and, and that would have been fun, because those characters are so adorable. And and uh, and same with Tangled. Like uh, Rapunzel is just, I think one of the best. The hair CG. movements amazing. Yeah, and again, Glenn Keane was a big part of that. He was a two D animator, but he was helping the the computer animators get more of a two D look to Rapunzel in her expressions and her poses and all that and so uh, I think that's what made it look extra special like she stands out has a lot of personality more so than even Frozen I think I I prefer Tangle to Frozen personally yeah Yeah. I just love the scenery and just the colors and just the movement of everything is amazing (laughs) yeah yeah um so because you were an animator for 2D movies um do you in general just have like a real soft spot and like bias towards the 2D movies versus like the 3D oh. animation now. Do you kind of like a huge? They're kind of better. They're better than the you know. Is that how you huge. feel? Yeah, huge. Uh, I mean, yeah. and and it's unfair to say um, the, the computer animated movies that Disney and and Pixar have done, um, and, and then DreamWorks, others too, uh, have been amazing. And you know, like even early on, Claudia with a Chance of Meatballs. I was just uh, mm-hmm. we're about to interview the directors of that um, for our podcast, and so I was just looking at a clip of that and going. These are just fun characters, and it's a, still a very fun story. It looks good, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you get the real subtle stuff that, like Anna and, and uh, you know, and Frozen, uh, mm-hmm. and you see their acting, and they're doing subtle, subtle acting where it's just a close up of their face and this very minuscule little squint stuff. That when I did Pocahontas back in the two D days, was really hard to do hand drawn to get yeah. that subtlety. They can do subtlety way better than we could do. Yeah. Now, I do think that we could do some things, cartooniness and, whoops, sorry, cartooniness <laughs> and uh, um, a- and expression, pushed expressions, especially uh, a lot better in, in 2D. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and I think that kind of comes through. Where, where you really see it is like the remake of Lion King because – that was just photorealistic lions compared to our animated lions yeah. that were kind of half. They were not anthropomorphic where they got up on two legs, but they definitely in their face, they were anthropomorphic. We we even every once in a while would kind of have them gesture with their hands, um, which obviously lions don't do. But you didn't see that. Like all of that, all the expressions with the eyebrows and, and yeah. the, the movement of the face and, and even the dialogue um, expressions and stuff. Like at one point I had young Simba go up to Nala when they're they're young and he's like hey Nala let's go over to the you know the elephant graveyard he's, you know he's like tr- and she's taking her bath her, her yeah. mom's and so like I have him kind of talking the on mouth, the side yeah. of his mouth right and 
That's like, cool. They aren't doing that in the live It was action. lost, yeah. Yeah, so so much of that push and that fun, uh, and especially that emotion, uh, was just stripped out of that that CG animated or version uh, of Lion King, the newer one. Yeah. I know a lot of people were disappointed that it wasn't more of an animated versus it was so realistic that I think people were hoping it would be more cartoon like you know I think people were hoping that it would lend itself to it and I've seen some people on YouTube actually remake like remake certain parts as uh-huh. more animated it looks so cool yeah but, I, I do think that that was a mistake I mean like they mm-hmm. didn't need to go as cartoony as we went I get that no. but you could have taken those same models and with very little tweaking um, just got more personality and acting in, into yeah. it. I mean, if you're going to have an animal talk, go all the way. I yeah, 100%. You know, don't go halfway. <laughs> how, how do you feel about the remakes that they've made um, based on obviously the movies that you worked on? You know, obviously The Lion King, I haven't seen the full movie of the new Lion King movie yet, but from what hey, I saw, neither. a lot of it... <laughs> I a lot of what I saw was like frame by frame, just like what yeah. you guys did. Um, how do you feel about like these remakes specifically, say Lion King, which does seem to be more frame by frame? Yeah. And, and my brother and I talk about this all the time. We mm-hmm. get these questions a lot. But I yeah, I, um, I like it in that it really does keep those films alive, even the yeah. originals. Right. Because now we get the comparisons. And so that just brings back the the OG uh, Mulan or the OG Lion King, right? And people will go back and watch it and compare and all that. And so for that reason, great. Keep making these live action films. And, and I know Disney's making a ton of money off of them. Mm-hmm. I, I just heard that they've announced the Lion King 2 and they got a director for it and everything. Wow. And so, you know, that's great. Um, and generally the nostalgia part kind of kicks in and everybody likes the original better. And I like hearing that too. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, really, honestly, like the like you were saying, the shot for shot. The, I just think there's a better way to do it more mm-hmm. times than not. And and uh, some of the better ones were Maleficent, uh, Cinderella. Um, those are amazing. Yeah. Those are really well done. I think the new Milan is really interesting. Um, mm-hmm. I just like it when they take the story in a new direction, bring yeah. new stuff to it. We get to see, you know, like Cinderella. I really enjoyed uh, seeing her from a different perspective. I. Uh, Maleficent, we definitely saw that. We saw her as like, oh my gosh, wait, she was kind of a good guy at at the beginning. That was one of my favorite live action movies. She's got a whole other side. And and most villains do, right? The Mm -hmm. better villains have a soft side. They have a a reason that they set out to do something and it just didn't go right for them. And then they got bitter or whatever and and kind of turned to the dark side, if you want to call it that. But, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, so those are great. But then, Mm -hmm. yeah, the... Beauty and the Beast wasn't very good. It was a lot more shot for shot. And then, of course, Lion King was, like, just directly yeah. shot for shot. I mean, I animated some of those scenes, you know, that they were copying. I was like, yeah. oh, my gosh, yeah, why, why, why did you? And I know those animators, those computer animators that had to work on Lion King and things and, and were told to, no, 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 copy that, copy that. I know they didn't like that because they wanted yeah. to bring some of themselves to it. And uh, it's a shame, you know, yeah. to hold back people like that just to – to say you're going to and then get big name celebrity voices and stuff like that and say and that's what they sell more than anything are the voices. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was just kind of unfortunate to see that happen. But again, yeah. I, I like Mulan. I like the new one. Even I've not seen that Mushu. yet. I've not seen that one yet. Oh, but I know I've not. But I know Mushu's not in it. How do you feel about that? Well, I mean, I, I cut after seeing Beauty and the Beast and seeing Cogsworth and Lumiere, like those mm-hmm. sidekick characters really not look good. I they were the worst part for me. I like yeah. Belle was was amazing. Beast was not that great. And the, but then the those characters were even worse. Like the little Lumiere. It didn't the, look anything like it. They didn't no. And they didn't have much personality. They were all Mm-mm. like shiny and photorealistic and very just stiff. Not, very stiff. Anyway, um I kind of felt like I dodged a bullet. You know, I was like, well my guy, Mushu, if he would have shown up, he would have been this photorealistic dragon. Yeah. They probably wouldn't have had him talk because how do you compete with with Eddie That's Murphy, um, and then and so he would have just made little sounds and stuff and like a little cricket. And he could have been fun and all that, but um, I have a feeling that I just would have been like, eh. and and then the comparisons would happen. It wouldn't have wor- worked well, I think, for Disney yeah. either. So I'm okay that with it. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, did you get any cool perks for working for Disney at the time? Did you get like passes to the parks or oh, like yeah. anything cool? Oh, pretty much all of it. So yeah, wow. we I had a silver pass, which I don't know mm-hmm. if they still do that nowadays. But they do. Yeah. Okay. So silver mm-hmm. pass, which meant I could go every day, and I could even I guess let other people in. Um, and things like that. So I, I had babies at the time, little girls. And so, you know, I would take them instead of their nap, I'd let their Aww. mom nap at home. And so I would go and just walk them around in a stroller through Epcot or, or Magic Kingdom or something like that. Mm-hmm. And just just enjoy the moment. I didn't have to go on a ride because I could go yeah. there any day, any time. I didn't feel mm-hmm. the pressure of having to, well, I got to wait in line. I got to get the most out of this day. I'm yeah. just like, no, I'm go just going to go hours. for an hour. Yeah, yep. I'll go for an hour or two. That's it. Mm-hmm. And so I remember doing that, and that was fun. Um, although it was Florida, so it was very hot. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, we got all the, the T-shirts. Usually every production, we get a couple T-shirts. One at the beginning that kind of just has a logo, and then another that said crew on it, or maybe had a little bit more artwork. And then we get sweatshirts. And, and then, of course, during the VHS days and DVD days, they would just give us those for every even films we didn't work on. Oh, we're really mm-hmm. re-releasing Dumbo. Here's a new you know video or DVD. And so we just had all of them, and we didn't have to buy that. That was kind of nice. Yeah. Um, but but a lot of the other stuff, not so much. Like, you know, if it was just stuff you'd find at a Disney store or whatever that had my character on it, I'd go out and run and buy those. I mean, that's why I have yeah. I have Mushu stuff everywhere because they didn't give it to me. I had to go get it. <laughs> that's so cool. Did you ever take anything home with you from making those movies? Oh, what are we talking about now? Are we talking about the secret stuff? Oh my god! You have secret stuff. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we all have secret stuff. Yeah, definitely. I mm-hmm. have a. Um, well, you can't see it. <laughs> I, would, I should turn the camera around. But I have like almost like a. Well, I call it a life size. Mushu is if he was life size, he you know he'd probably be the size of a cat. Mm-hmm. But I have a I have a Mushu doll that's like this tall, and you wow. can't see the ground. But basically, it's like four feet tall. Wow. And uh, he's just sitting in the corner of my office right over here. And that was from, I, I think, Crest uh, Toothpaste had some kind of a contest they did with Disney. And they they made like only three or four or five of these things. Wow. And maybe it was ten. Who knows? But I don't know where they all went. But like a few went to the prize winners. And then they had extras. And somehow I got one. Um, that is so cool. And I wish it was in perfect condition. But it's, you know, it is there. And so... I had stuff like that that you know you would not normally get necessarily. They were kind of mm-hmm. hard to get um, items. But then, yeah, I have animation drawings. I kept a lot of my work. Um, mm-hmm. I have drawings all over the place that are um, kind of one of a kind, basically. I have, mm-hmm. a, I have a drawing here. I kind of feel like I should show it now. Should I? Do we have time? Should I show we we do. Okay. <laughs> oh wow, that is so cool. I don't know if you can see this, but yes. It's every wow. single character uh, in Mulan, and it's drawn by the supervising animator um, oh of my that word. character. And Disney doesn't even have this. There's, wow. there's Mushu right here. Um, but as you can see, I'll, I'll try and zoom in a little bit. Um, wow, that's so cool. Yeah, so like that piece is, you know... One of my favorites, for sure. I have a Mushu. Actually, it's heartbreaking. I have a Mushu maquette. Um, so after I designed him, I did a, <clears throat> a drawing of him in a, in a pose where he's holding the gong. And mm-hmm. and it I had to do different angles of it for the sculptor. So you could see it from behind, from different angles. Anyway, I did that drawing, and then he sculpted it, and it became the production maquette. So... Uh, they only made, I don't know, 10 of them. Some VPs got it. Eddie Murphy got it, of course. And the supervising animator and the, and the lead character uh, cleanup artist also mm-hmm. got one, I think. And so, uh, and the directors, of course. So, but then we had an accident <laughs> through the year. I've been protecting it for years, mm-hmm. but I had a shelf above it and it fell and it, no. it just, his neck is now hanging off. So. <laughs> Oh, no, that's anyway, heartbreaking. <laughs> it is, and I haven't fixed it. I just have to constantly look at it and go, oh. Oh, it just drives me nuts. Oh. But they're just things in the end. Yeah, so. you've got the memories. That's the main thing. I have the memories. <laughs> and the movie's still out there, so that's yep. good, too. This can be out there forever. Um, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I have a couple of questions for you that I've asked for people if they had any for you. 
Yeah. Um, so first one was, do you prefer animating people or animals? Good question. Um, I like people. I mm -hmm. Again, my twin brother, Tony, he prefers drawing animal characters. Mm -hmm. Anthropomorphic, usually. But yeah, I like to draw people. I've really gotten into that. I think uh, once I did Pocahontas, especially, I had to do a lot of st uh, study of anatomy and and, uh, and acting and performance because it was just a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, that's what I prefer, yeah. And usually female characters, actually, because I have four girls, too. Yeah. Um, it those come to me slightly easier. I love superheroes too, so I'll, I'll do you know big muscular guys or mm -hmm. or you know uh, feminine uh, girls. So, and I created this thing called Mermaid on mm -hmm. Instagram, and so yes. again, that's all female based primarily. There can be mm -hmm. mer mermen, but yeah, mm -hmm. in general, a lot of uh, female characters for sure. Yeah. Um, regarding Mermaid, actually, one of the questions I had was about that. Okay. Um, they said, did you ever imagine Mermaid would turn into something as big as it is now? No. <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, I know I tell people, I'm like, well, it's it's a it's a curse and a blessing, right? You know, because mm -hmm. I, I had no idea I would still be doing it. I think we're, I think we had year five, just this last Mermaid. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so, yeah, this coming May, next one will be six. But um yeah, and every year it gets bigger. And then I think the quarantine, it, it may hit, right, you know, just soon after March when the quarantine hit in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So uh, there were a lot of people that couldn't do much else. And so Mermaid really hit at a great time uh, yeah. for a lot of people to have sort of something to do. And uh, so it was more popular than ever this last uh, May 2020. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so I, we have a website, mermaid.com, and then, mm -hmm. you know, every year I kind of fire it up and try and get people excited about doing it. And I usually do a, a project. I, I don't even follow my own drawing prompts. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and uh, I usually will do a project uh, that um, doesn't have anything to do with the prompts, unfortunately. But, like, I made an animated film with my twin brother one year. We did just a, wow. a one-minute animated film with a mermaid and a, and a seal character. He did the seal. And then we did, um, or I did, a, uh, an online comic strip uh, last year with a mermaid character. Uh, really enjoyed that. So, uh, and I did a children's book one year uh, that was a mermaid. Mm -hmm. uh, a TV uh, pitch for an anima animated TV series about a mermaid girl, at, like a mm -hmm. preschool show. Just every year I kind of come up with a new project. Uh, uh, that's what makes it fun for me. That is really cool. I need to participate next year. That's the one yeah, thing do. that I've never done. I do. I'm ah, sorry. I will make yeah. sure that I do next year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I need to work on like just my character drawings in general because I'm more of a, like a, a landscapey kind of cartoony uh -huh. animated cartoon kind of person, not so much a a character design thing because it kind of scares me, I guess. So that's probably why I should do it. <laughs> yeah. And many people say that, but at least you don't have to draw legs. It makes it a little bit easier. That is true. That is true. <laughs> I should buy one of your books and then I'll know. <laughs> I do have books. Um, That'll help last you. question. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, last question. Um, are your handprints in the Legends Plaza? No, definitely not. Uh, I'm not an anima animation Disney uh, legend. And, oh, well, uh, I think you are. Brother. Uh, oh, I think you, you. are. <laughs> No, I, I, I would be horrified, I think, if I was even no. asked. I'd be like, no, no, this is a mistake because I look up to those people just like everybody else. And, mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I've done some stuff. I've been very blessed and, and I've definitely kept active and maybe even done more since my Disney days than, mm -hmm. than, than during. But, um, you know, I, I would just put so many people above me on that list that deserve it. It's just it'd be hard to it'd be hard. I would accept it. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. But if you're listening, Disney, I'll take it. But <laughs> do it, I, Disney. <laughs> I would feel bad. <laughs> oh no, yeah. you! I think you've inspired a whole generation. Like you inspire me. You inspire so many people. You know, a lot of people were really excited about the fact I'd mentioned um, doing podcasts with you. So you're that's definitely great. a legend in my eyes. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. nice. Thank Aww. you. Welcome. I do appreciate that. Yeah. Well, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Um, mm -hmm. But if anyone wants to follow Tom, Tom, go ahead and. You know, promote your socials and your podcast yeah. as well. So I'm 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 mostly on Instagram. That's Tom Bancroft One uh, on tw on Twitter. I'm I'm there as Tom Bancroft One, the number one. And then also I'm on TikTok. I have teen girls, and they got me on TikTok. I'm not oh, dancing. Cool. Don't worry, I'm not singing. <laughs> I actually have done a few uh, draw. And I need to do it more often. I'm not mm -hmm. as regular as I'd like to be, but 
uh, I've done a few drawing demos and things like that, and where I actually draw Simba and think uh, and some Disney cool. characters and then other characters and stuff. So uh, go check it out there too. Definitely, and your podcast as well. Yes, so the podcast I do it with my twin brother that I mentioned. We're both Disney veterans, and so and by the way, he created Pumbaa and Kronk uh, in Empress New Group. So uh, we have a lot to talk about. We know a lot of people in the industry, and we interview them many, many times, too. And it's called the Bancroft Brothers. Sorry, I said that wrong. Bancroft Brothers Animation Podcast. I have, hold on. I have a little pen here. <laughs> i got to show it. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm going <laughs> to. Okay. Cut this out. This okay. Is really <laughs> boring. I don't know if it's that. No. Okay. There it is. So it's called the Bancroft Brothers Animation oh, so cool. Podcast. Where's, I don't that's know if you cool. can see that. That is really cool. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, thank you so incredibly much for taking time out to do this with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Chloe. I really yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah, Definitely. Thank you to everyone yeah. listening as well. We appreciate it a lot. <laughs> Thank you, listeners. Keep tuning in to Chloe's show. She's got a lot <laughs> coming up. And can you give us a little preview of one of your next talk? People Ooh, you're talk to? Um, I'm going to be speaking to Nerdy Crafter, who's a friend of mine. She does a lot of fun, crafty videos on YouTube. Uh, Mariah Elizabeth is another one who does a lot of crafty videos. Uh -huh. um, I'm hoping to talk to a few um, artists that do licensed work with Disney, like licensed artwork for the the parks yeah that's um, a fun one. yeah i have quite a few people lined up i'm very excited there's a lot of people i still need to ask so i don't want to say any more because i've only asked like three people but <laughs> yeah yeah have, we, I'm very have excited. we all said yes i know i was one of those and said mm -hmm. yes right so far yes <laughs> oh good so you're doing yeah. great thank you <laughs> well i know this is going to go far so i'm i'm, oh, thank I'm glad you. to say that i was i was there when you were tiny um, oh thank you literally when you were a little girl watching the disney movies yeah you know, as a, as a not a beginner, but but uh, you're going to be huge uh, podcast, uh, not podcast, but YouTuber. So thank you very much. <laughs> I knew her when. <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah, you got it. Oh well, take care of yourself. I'm really excited once again. Thank you, and apologies for the mess up with the time. <laughs> oh no, no worries. Yeah. No, thank so, you. This is thank fun. you very much. All right. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> okay. Bye.